Anglicanism, at its best, tries not to be a club with a sign, true believers only. Not to be a club that rewards conformity. Not to be a club that wields spiritual power over others. Indeed, not to be a club at all in any sense of that word. Rather, Anglicanism tries at its best to be a symbol that regardless of attendance, regardless of beliefs or the lack of them, or good works or not, all can and do belong in the ecology of God. There is room for everyone. And St. Matthew takes its role as a symbol very seriously. Our namesake was a tax collector. That meant three things in first century Palestine. Firstly, he was a lackey of the Romans, traitorously siding with the oppressing army. Secondly, he was an extortionist, demanding a surcharge, sometimes an astronomical surcharge. He was one who cheated the poor. And thirdly, tax collector meant that he was a sinner, one outside religious law and teaching, and therefore in that culture, outside of God's embrace. Jesus' inclusion of Matthew was highly and deeply offensive. Yet Jesus dined with him, with his friends, and the church canonized him, and we named this place after him. It's easy to imagine Matthew as tough, unyielding, hard, like a rock. Yet even from hard rock, as Exodus reminds us, can come the refreshing, life-giving waters of grace. We just need to hold the door open to the possibilities. Our name, St. Matthew, is symbolic. Those who don't fit, those who offend others, those who are repugnant to the normal standards of decency, behavior, and theology are welcome. In God's ecology, all belong. Although, of course, some don't want to fraternize with the likes of the Matthews and stay well clear of us. When wedding couples come, and they come here more than to any other church, I often ask why St. Matthews, given the glory of this building and the obvious wisdom and humility of its clergy, <laughs> you might be surprised that the main reason for coming is they feel they won't be judged. Such inclusion sends another message, that this place is prepared to take risks. It's prepared to do things that other churches might not. It's prepared to open its doors to all manner of people and organizations, sacred and secular, and to laugh jubilantly to love justly and to live joyfully with all the tensions and opportunities that brings. Yet we do not take risks just for the sake of being risky. To paraphrase the Magnificat, I pray that the risks we take will always ultimately be for the purpose of pulling the mighty and their reasoning their self-serving reasoning down from their thrones and lifting up the lowly, the ostracized, and the marginal. Our building, too, is symbolic. Our forebears dreamed a big vision of grace and splendor, 
of architectural lines that would lift the eyes and lift the soul. Raising money in the 1890s was hard work. I imagine they might have been tempted to downsize or to reduce their vision to the certainty of their savings. We do know they never put a spire on the bell tower and they never installed the organ. They made, though, a building that was beautiful to the eye and to the ear, a place that would inspire, a sacred place for any and all. With the recent sad and shocking demise of Christchurch Cathedral, this building remains now the one integrated neo-Gothic stone church in this country. And so today, we acknowledge the completion of this building with the installation of a 100% genuine Henry Willis organ, with pipes old, some new, some borrowed, and some kind of blue. It looks magnificent, sounds even better. It's a wonderful piece of art, even before it's played. But let's be clear about its purpose. For beauty and the beauty of music to the eye and ear is a sacred pathway, a means of opening the soul, our souls, to that mystery we call God. Music is spiritual sustenance here, water in a parched land. It can lift us, move us, open us. As my favorite skeptic Kurt Vonnegut once said, I don't believe in God, but then there's music. And so today we give thanks for the huge amount of work involved in planning, fundraising, refining, negotiating, building, and overseeing this project. Thank you all, all who gave a little and a lot of money and of effort, of hopes and prayers. Thank you. We also bless this morning the St. Thomas Chapel. Originally the Lady Chapel from the mission ship Southern Cross 5, built in 1903. In 1934, the chapel was moved from the ship, amid some controversy, to St. Thomas's Freeman's Bay. In 1963, that church was deconsecrated in order for the motorway to proceed. And the ship's chapel came here to the basement of St. Matthew's where it has now come up, resurrected, in the shape of its first manifestation on the ship. This chapel represents for us the temerity, the faith, the passion, the controversy, the Anglo-Catholic worship of the community of St. Thomas's Freeman's Bay. And today we give thanks for that community and for the dream kept alive here in our midst. And lastly, we will bless a new kitchen, the old one now housing part of the organ. Without a kitchen, our ability to offer hospitality in this house of prayer is severely limited. Some, of course, don't like us offering food and drink in a house of prayer. Yet hospitality is not just a courtesy or a marketing ploy, but rather an essential element of what we symbolize. To be hospitable is not only to welcome friend and stranger, but also to be willing to be changed by that interaction. It's therefore a spiritual discipline. It is to welcome people here without judging them, confident in our kawa, and receptive to all the promise and challenge they bring. 
Hospitality is keeping the door ajar so the possibility of God might come in. So on this glad day of celebration and thanksgiving, acknowledging those who have gone before in this place and on whose shoulders we stand, and the community of St. Thomas's, let us remember Matthew, all the Matthews, and be a place not only of beauty, music, and prayer, but also of indiscriminate hospitality, risky engagement, and siding with the marginal. Let us be a place that symbolizes that all can and do belong in the ecology of God. Amen. <laughs>